Praise God. Good day and God bless. Apostle Ken Smith coming to you from the city of Ontario, coming to you from the worship place of worship. Amen. We thank God for another day and another opportunity just to come and to share the word of God with you. Looking forward to going forth into the word of God. Uh, I tell you, over the last few weeks, I've been dealing with the same subject matter. Um, and it has to do with uh, over in the book of 1 Peter chapter 5. And it's really talking about the sense of the, the devil, um, our adversary, the going forth as a roaring lion. Uh, there's so many things that are there that the Spirit of God has been dealing with me that have been trying to get away and keep coming back to the same place. But if you've been watching and or listening, I want to tell you, um, go back, 1 Peter chapter 5, um, and we're looking at some things. I want to tell you, the Spirit of God is speaking to us. As he began to speak to the elders, he began to use a word where he said, he told the elders, the leaders, the overseers, he told them, I want you to feed the flock. And it's interesting to note because as we go further, there's different things that come out. Feeding the flock, it kind of represents the sense of looking at the sheep or um, this herd. And so later on, when he brings up the sense of talking about the lion, it brings you back to that same kind of analogy where you see the lion going forth after the herd. And the reason I'm coming here, uh, the Holy Spirit hasn't been able to let me go. I, I've been looking at some words and I like to sometimes do uh, the sense of a word study. And if you will, I want you to just kind of get your Bibles, mark your Bibles, if you will. There's some things I want you to look at that become very interesting to note. And part partially because I just feel like we need to be attentive that the Spirit of God is yet speaking. So he, spit, he says, feed the flock of God, which is among you. He's talking again at this point to the elders. We see that in verse 1. He's talking to the elders and exhorting them to go forth. There are certain things that he's going to give to the elders that they are specifically supposed to speak and to tell. And he goes on to say um, how uh, they're supposed to speak to the younger and then the younger individuals. And the younger are supposed, he says, as they say, Likewise, you younger, submit yourselves unto the elders. Yes, also be subject one to another. And then it, it's like he doesn't stop there, but he says all of us are supposed to be cloaked in this same type of humility. The same thing he says to the younger that you sub submit yourself. Then he says all are to be cloaked or clothed with humility. He says, for God resisted the proud and give of grace to the humble. And I want to pay attention to this. God resists the proud and give grace to the humble. Later on, as we're talking again about the lion, one of the things that comes forth with the lion is the lion runs with what's called a pride. And, and one of the things the Lord began to minister to me on, he said, it's about this thing about pride. And as I be, before, I've been showing you different things about the lion, how he moves and how he goes forth after his prey. I was sharing with you how I had observed um, one of the channels, nature channels, and it was showing these three lions and how they began to objectively go forth after their prey. And one of the things the Lord began to show to me again, he said, I've been using, he said, you, you use the word stealth. And, and so the lion is stealth in his movement. But the one of the things the Lord said this time to me, he says, I want you to see the lion in the midst of the grass, his his basically, even his covering or his fur, his skin, basically it allows him to be in the brush and it, he, it, it seems that he adheres or simply looks into a place where you lose sight. He is camouflage. And the Lord began to show me something about the lion. But, but again, about the lion, but I want to tell you about the body of Christ. He began to show me how many of us have camouflage. And basically when we camouflage ourselves, uh, not in the sense of coming from the world, because he called us, he said that we are in the world, but we're not of the world. Of the world. One of the things that's happened when we talk about this camouflage of the lion, it allows him to fit in. It allows him to be unseen. The body of Christ is not called to be in a place that the world does not recognize us. We're not supposed to be like the world, 
but we're not supposed to fit in with the world's way. And we have camouflaged ourselves in such a manner, in such a way, so that we've taken on the persona of the world. We've become like the world. You, it's hard to distinguish us from the world. We become, in this sense, it's like the lion has taken hold of us without us even recognizing what transpired. It's like we have stopped being the people of God. He called us, he said, be holy as I am holy. But we've conducted ourselves and come in a place where we begin to be just like the world. It's hard to distinguish you and I from the world. God's not called us in that place. So, so some of the things that he was showing me with the lion, I saw the sense of the people of God. He was saying, see this difference, see this thing. As you see the lion, see the people. It says, the Bible says, and, and it was the character, if I can say it like this, it's the characteristics or the character of the lion that we were looking at. It's the sense as a lion. It's not the lion per se, him being, he says, he, he comes forth as a roaring lion, but he really wants us to see how this lion comes forth, his attributes. And in seeing the attributes, I can see some of the things we've taken on the persona of the enemy. The enemy, it's like we've taken on this attribute of this animal. It's, it's as though we ourselves have become something that we weren't supposed to. The enemy, if you say it like this, the enemy that's after us, oh, wait, wait, I'm getting ahead of myself. I want you to see something because just kind of flow with me because I'm getting a little excited. He says, go down to verse six. He says, humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. I've been going over this over and again. Remember, everyone's called to this place. Each of us are called to humble ourselves. Humble ourselves as the God. Humble ourselves under those in the sense of leadership. We're called into place to humble. But then he says this. In this context, I've been sharing with you over and over. He says to humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. Now, I've explained to you when he talks about this sense of humbling under the mighty hand of God, that mighty hand of God or the hand of God is looked at in two ways. In the Old Testament, it's looked at as a sense of discipline and deliverance. So God speaks to us that we're supposed to, how you say, humble ourselves under his hand that he might bring forth deliverance and discipline in our lives, that he might discipline us to walk in accordance to the spirit of God, that we might be disciplined to walk in the will and the ways of God, that we be disciplined and skilled in the things of God. Amen? That we can be delivered from the hand of the enemy. That we can be delivered from the things of the, of the enemy. That we can understand how to walk, if I say it in this fashion. And so he says, I've called you to humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. And then he says that he may exalt you in due time. Now, what is this due time? Now, now, when God speaks about a due time, again, it brings us into the same place that we can understand. He said there's a timing. Sometimes we want to try and make it happen. God says you can't make it happen. He says allow him, or if you will, the opportune time. So the due time is really the due season or the season that is the most opportune for God to move. So God's looking for his most opportune time for you and I. And he says, I will exalt you in due time. And then he says, cast all your cares. Now, really, what the Spirit of God is saying, this is not a one-time thing. He says, I want you to continue. Take your cares, your concerns, whatever they are, bring them to me. Actually, just throw them upon me. Well, what is that like to heap something onto somebody, to toss them at them? Well, God is saying, I want you to cast your cares, your concerns, your worries, your anxieties, whatever it is that's got your mind, that's caused you to be overwhelmed, that's brought you to a place that you cannot move. He said, I want you to cast them on me. I was sharing even on last week how I went through a week. Man, I'm telling you, it seemed like it was more than just a week where I was overwhelmed. I could not have made a, a, a basic decision because I felt so overwhelmed. But even in my sense of being overwhelmed, I felt the sense of anger, disappointment. I had things that, that from years ago that had come upon me. I couldn't understand why. And the Lord told me, look back and see how the enemy operates. He said, look at the lion. The lion moves in such a fashion that he tries to create a sense of confusion. He stays in the stealth mode in his camouflage position, moving, how you say, quietly to get to the one position where he can pounce. Well, when he pounces, when he comes out of the camouflage place, when he comes out of the stealth mode, the first thing he does is roar. 
he, he begins to make this noise. Well, the Lord was showing me, man, you're dealing with all this noise. You know what it's like when everything's coming from every direction is chaos. One of the things about that chaos that the enemy wants to create for us, it causes us to move somehow or another in a way that's not the manner in which God wants you to move. There's no sense of peace in the things that the enemy's trying to create. And so you have the sense of these chaotic movements, the sense of trying to do something, to strike out, to move in a way that God did not ordain or give. And hence, you find yourself in a place you never should be. Well, that's me. I found myself trying to move, but I couldn't move. Well, that's the other thing about the enemy. When he creates this chaos, it also creates fear. Fear paralyzes us. When we're paralyzed, we can't move. God didn't cause us to have the spirit of fear. He called us, he said, I gave you not the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So God didn't give us the spirit of fear. There's some things we have to undertake to, under, to, I say, to underscore what the enemy's doing. And I want to tell you, when this thing came, it was trying to get me in a place, in a way, I want to tell you, everything was vexing me. You know, when you're, when you're concerned and consumed with things, you're vexed almost by the simplest things. Someone comes just to ask you something and you're annoyed, you're agitated, you're irritated. Well, why are we like that? I want to tell you, he was showing me the enemy was coming at me. And I didn't, hadn't even recognized it as such, but the enemy was making his, how you say, he was pouncing, making his noise. The herd, remember I told you, when he started this, he was talking about the flock. One of the things about the herd, when the enemy attacks the herd, he's only looking for one. He's not trying to get the whole herd. He can't take down the whole herd. He can only get one. Check this out. The Bible says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, now look at this word, because not your brother's adversary, not your friend's, but your adversary, your foe, your, your opposition, the one that's your adversary, the devil, as a. But now see this, your adversary, it's the one that's after you. The enemy literally has looked and schemed, and how would you say he has looked carefully at your life to see at the place he can come in? He's looking for a means of which there is an opening that he can come. Now, we don't think like that, but the Bible clearly says something to us that he's saying to us, and it's your adversary. He, he could have just been, if you wanted to put it out there and just put it out there, it would be in the sense of it could be anyone, but it's a personal thing when it comes this fashion. He says that you might hear it, that you would understand that your adversary, the devil, so he's looking for you. He also told us, be sober, be vigilant. It's like God's telling us there's some places that I want you to be prior to this that you can understand because your adversary, your adversary, the devil, as a, as a, as a roaring lion. It, it, it's saying this is what he characterized himself. This is what he looks like. doesn't mean he is. It just means what he looks like. He comes forth as a roaring lion, walking about. Look at this. He walks around. It's like he's moving around. It's kind of like when you go back to Job, you hear how Job, uh, the, the discourse between God and, and the enemy. And the enemy, if you will, Satan says to, 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 um, to God, God says, where you been, Satan? He says, well, I've been walking around the earth to and fro. And basically, he says, I'm looking. This is me paraphrasing. I was looking for somebody in whom I could get. He said, I saw your servant Job. He said, but the only reason I can't touch Job is because you got a hedge of protection around him. But remember, he says he was walking around. He was looking for means to come in. Well, see, that adversary is like a legal opponent. And so he really looks for legalistic means in which to come in. He's looking for a place that allows him to open. In other words, when I say a legalistic way, is that he's looking for the place that you have legally missed God. And that's the place he comes. It's an opening. He can only come where there's a place that we have opened the door or opened a means for him to come. He cannot come without that means. He cannot come unless we allow it. So I said we allow it. It's like when I mean we allow it, it's we opening the door. 
Me, opening the door. Wow. Can you imagine opening the door to Satan? No, you and I cannot. We'd say no. There's no way we'd ever do it. If the devil was to come to you or I and simply said, hey, listen, I want you to go to hell, nobody would even go. Nobody would consider. No one would think twice about that. That would be the first thing. No way. I don't want any part of that. So what happens is he looks for means in which to come. He offers us something, if you will, something that appeases to us to get us to fall. Let me stay on course. This makes sense to anybody. Glory to God. So he's looking for means. The adversary, and I use this word adversary because it's it really from from the word, it's a legalistic term. It's kind of like that of a lawyer. And so he's looking for a legal means. So he looks at the word. He literally looks at the word and says, Hey, is there a means in which I can attack this person? So he's looking as as your adversary. Because your adversary, so he's looking for what legal right or what legal grounds do I have to come into your life? Where's the opening? What place are you not covered? Where is your hedge of protection broken? That's the place I come in. That's interesting. So it becomes an individual thing. So the enemy, when you go back and you see the lion, the lion comes forth. These lions will come forth and they, they roar. They're simply trying to dislodge, how would you say, the, the one individual from the pack, from the herd. They're trying to move them in another direction so that they can run them down. They look for the weak, the feeble. How you say, they're looking for those that, that are not strong, that may be sick or whatever, whatever, whatever thing that represents the sense of a problem where the hedge is broken down. That's what they're looking for. And so that's the one they go after. So the first thing they do is to make this noise as they pounce out to create chaos and confusion and cause us to run in various different directions. Well, can I say this? This is the devil. That's how he operates. When he calls us to move, now he seeks after that one. Mm -hmm. That one. Well, why after that one? Because now, let's go back and understand the herd or the flock. One of the things that happens, I've watched different animals, and especially zebras, I've watched them. And one of the things that happens with zebra is that when the lion comes, they kind of back up, bring the backside back uh, and, and create a circle. And no matter how the lion comes, they just kick. All of them are kicking out mm -hmm. at the lion. Mm -hmm. The lion finds no entry point because they're working together Kicking at him, he has no way in. <coughs> well, if it's one, if it's only one, he now has entry points, way he's going to come in. Listen, your adversary, the devil, is looking for the entry point. He's looking for the place that he can come in. As a roaring lion, he walks about seeking. Now watch what he says. Seeking, so he's looking after. He's trying to find a means to come in whom he may devour. So it's, it's, it's just a word that we got to, let's say, say it like this. We got to be vigilant in the sense of what we're doing as other than the things of God because you got to watch because the enemy's looking for a road, an inroad, a way in. Now, I've been sharing this, glory to God. I've been talking about this, and I want to tell you, because the enemy's going to come, but God said that's not the end of it. There is, God still offers us help in the midst of this. My focal point, my focal point has been talking about the devil, because it's like, man, I'm creating a sense where I just want people to be able to walk down and see some different things. The Lord's been showing me over and over. I've been trying to get out of this. I'm like, God, can I just leave this alone? He keeps bringing me back to this same place. I've been fighting to do something different, but I keep seeing the lion. You know what it's like to see how the lion, you ever watch how the lion gets agitated and just keeps walking back and forth, walking back and forth in a cage? He just walks back and forth. The lion is walking seeking for an entry point. God says, I won't get, get my people so that they're strong, so they're ready, enable them to be able to handle, to stand in a place where the enemy's trying to get in. I don't want an, I don't want an entry point. I don't want a way in. I don't, I don't want it in the sense of just how you and I would think. Well, it brings us back to the place where we have to be, back up, back up, back up. Where we have to be, first of all, remember he says, you've got to be in this place that you've humbled yourself under the mighty hand of God. Now, two things that happens, the mighty hand of God. We talk about discipline, 
What is God going to discipline? He's going to discipline us to show us how to create those places that were the, you know, well, let me rephrase. We have things in all of our lives that we recognize there's some things that we have never dealt with. There's some things that have not been dealt with. And like I say, one of the things that you let me see right off the bat was when I said the pride. It's, an, it's, an, it's, it's, it's great to understand this, that pride is one of those things that work within us. I didn't understand, you know, how prideful I personally could be, how proud I could walk in certain things. That was not God. These are areas where the Lord said they must come down. You must humble yourself. Man, oh, you ever get to the place you feel like, not me, Lord. The Lord said to me some years ago, he told me, he said, there are some things that came in my life. He says, I've been using you. And as I've used you, I've also brought some things in your life to create you a situation where you would remain humble. And I thought to myself, God, he says, I, I humbled you so that you wouldn't get a big head. And I thought, wow, I wouldn't get a big head. Well, let me tell you like this. The minute God starts doing things in our lives, so many times we think what we've done. We think that we've done it and not him. God has to show us over and over again, it's not you, it's me that's working in you. It's me that's working through you. It's me that's working for you. It's real easy for us to think and get in a mold where we think what we've done. God said it's not about you. It's about me and me being glorified. Can I tell you this? I found myself in a place where I look at and I say, God, you know, I have to ask him, Lord, keep me humble because it's so easy to fall into other places. Well, I don't want to stay there too long, but it's like, listen, pride does different things to us. It reacts in different ways. Sometimes, you, you ever been to a place you knew you were wrong about something? Instead of just saying, okay, I'm sorry, pride will keep you from that place of even apologizing. Pride will keep you in a place that's like, hey, I'm not, I ain't doing nothing. When, when you're supposed to move and do certain things, and you know you're supposed to do it, you won't do it because of pride. Man, have you and I ever walked in pride? It's interesting to note that the lion walks with the pride. <laughs> Isn't it interesting to note that we also walk in pride? God wants us to humble ourselves. I don't know if this is making sense to you. I know I'm going back and forth. There's so much that's there. And, and God offers the sense of help, but Pride wasn't the only thing. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I saw myself. And can I say it like this? Because a couple of weeks ago, man, it was like, it, it was to the point, I remember someone coming, they were just they were just trying to talk to me. I was so bothered and I was just looking for some different things. Um, we have the tendency sometimes when we're really bothered, I don't know about you, but when I'm really bothered or sometimes I want to just get by myself. That's probably not the best place to be sometimes. Sometimes you need to be in a place of prayer and a place that you're connected with other believers in the body of Christ. But I found sometimes I've tried to run off to a place by myself. What I found out, that's also sometimes where the enemy wants you. I'm not talking about when you get into the presence of God. I'm just talking about the sense of where you just say, hey, you know, right now I just need to remove myself from everybody, kind of just be in it. I'm telling you, sometimes the enemy gets after us because of situation. I was in that place. This is me. This is Kim. Ken Smith, this is me. This is where I was at. This is what I was dealing with. And the Spirit of God had to show me some things because I wasn't even letting anybody to come into my place. I wasn't going to let them get close because of what I was going through mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. Whew. Didn't even know at that moment that I was under attack till the Lord brought it back to show me it's the lion in this context. It's like the lion has roared. When he roars, you know what happens when the lion roars? I don't know if you've ever heard a certain noise or a sudden noise that's come up. Man, it just startles you. The moment he roars, it startles you. His roar causes you to do different things. I reacted to the noise. With that noise, that chaos begun in my own spirit, in my own mind, fear cropped up. Can I tell you, the enemy wants you operating in the fear. God says, no, I've not given you, I said this before, but I've not given you the spirit of fear, 
but of power and of love and of a sound mind. God's called us to do certain things. I don't care what it looks like, how it feels, what others think. You may have to do something that nobody else wants because it's what God's calling for. Amen. Stand in that place. You know, he's called us to be in this situation. We've got to hear him. Just know that whatever you do, you do it as under the spirit of God. I recognize that I was in a place that the enemy was trying to mess with my mind only because the Holy Spirit showed it to me. Man, I never saw the scripture like this before, but it was like a roaring lion and it was like loud. I couldn't have made any kind of decision. I couldn't have made any kind of move because of where I was at. One of the things that happens is when you get overwhelmed, if you don't cast your cares, remember the Bible says, cast your cares on him, your concerns, your worries on him. If you don't do this, you'll find yourself in a place that basically you don't realize it, but it's pride because you're trying to solve or settle yourself. <laughs> God didn't call us to try to figure it out. He didn't call us to walk it out or work it out ourselves without seeking him. Remember the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding, but in all thy ways, acknowledge him and he would do what? He would direct your path. So God's called us into a place. I don't want you to think it through in your, in your way of thinking, progression of your thought, but I want you to trust me in what you're doing. And I believe the Spirit of God began to minister to me over some days to get me into the place that I needed to be. Hence, I can't get away from the same thing. It's like I keep coming back because I want people to understand. Sometimes you don't even recognize your adversary has looked for means to attach himself to you. You don't recognize he's even roared. You don't even understand. But here's the thing you got to understand. Here's the things you do need to know. You know, in the midst of all this, we still have to resist the devil. The Bible says resist the devil and he'll flee. But, but he said before resist, you got to tell, tell the truth. We says, you know, that we're supposed to humble ourselves, therefore to God, and then resist the devil. We like to kind of just say, resist the devil and he'll flee. The devil's not going to go anywhere but behind you and give you a good, good, firm push if you let him. Glory to God. A good thrust in the wrong direction. But, but what God really wants from us is in that place of humbling. Again, see how it comes back? Whom resists steadfast in the faith knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are the It's just like, you ever feel like because you're going through, you're the only one? You ever feel like this thing that's happening that you're the only one is happening to? That's tricks of the enemy. He wants you to believe that it's only you and you alone. We wouldn't be the first and we won't be the last. God wants you to know that you're not the only one. But just as you resist in the faith, be steadfast in your faith, he says, there's some things I'm going to do. I'm going to keep working this thing out for you. Uh, you, you know, you ever, you ever recognize that you're going to get victory? You ever, you ever recognize that God hasn't given up on you? Yeah. You know, and so there's some things that God does. And I've been saying this, I mean, tell you, over the last three weeks now, I've been talking about the same message. Someone's probably getting tired of it, but, but I'll probably be able to teach on this for a while because it's this thing that the Spirit of God is saying. We have got to recognize the power of God within us, the power of God around us. But then God is saying, you're not doing it by yourself. You're not doing this by yourself. Man, cannot you believe this, that we're not called to do this of, of on our own accord? So in verse 10, <clears throat> in verse 10, he does this. I've been telling you this. And, and again, a reminder, he offers divine aid. You know what it's like? When something comes in a way, if you will, something comes and you need help and you really need help. You need someone or something to intervene. I want to tell you this. This is what really, really makes me stop and think. I keep looking. I keep looking at different things and the, at the power of God. Man, I, I'm telling you at the power of God. It, it, just stay with me. This kind of like way out. But I was looking at something that just kind of just kind of mess with my mind because the Lord keeps telling me, he says, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. He said, what I've done for others, I'll do the same for you. And, and you're, you sometimes like, what does that mean? What are you really saying? Well, how does that fit in, in, in the criteria of what I'm dealing with? What, what are you really saying to me? I was looking at something 
you know, that really kind of blew my mind because I got to thinking, um, and the Lord said, look, I want you to understand, I, I fought battles for others. I said, well, okay, Lord. He says, I fought battles for, for David. Uh, I, I said, well, David, I said, but David had to do, anybody remember David? David did a lot of running from Saul. He said, but you know, he says, I put David in position on more than one occasion where Saul was after David. He said, what I did, I literally, can you imagine this? God literally caused a sleep to fall on a whole army. I'm not talking about sleep. You don't want an army rest. They kind of rest like God said he caused a deep sleep to fall on the army of Saul. I said, God, wow. He says, I can move in ways that you have never even considered. I can move in ways you never thought. Can you imagine what it was like for a whole army to fall into a deep sleep? And God sends David in at this point to take his spear and to do. He had to do some things just to show the power of God. God said, hey, listen, if I could do that for David. He says, now listen, I can cause some things to happen for you that you cannot even imagine. He said, the same thing I did then, I do today. He says, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. He kept showing me things in the word that just kind of made my mind say, wow. Because we focus so much on the enemy that we don't see God. We focus so much on what the enemy's doing that we can't talk about the power of God. We keep focusing on how the enemy is, has so much power that we don't see the power of God. Well, I want to tell you, this is what the Lord began to minister to my heart. This is what he was dealing with me. He says, I'm bringing aid. I'm bringing help. He said, in the midst of those things, he said, just like I did it then, I'll do it now. He said, son, I've done things in your life. He said, but you've tried to recoil. You ever, you ever been in that place you just kind of pull back? Glory to God. I had someone this week that began to tell me about the pain that they were having. And I, I wasn't going to pray, but the Holy Spirit overwhelmed me. He says, I want you to pray. And I don't even know if he was just saying, I want you to pray. I just, just, the unction of the Spirit of God was so strong, I couldn't do anything but pray. And when I began to pray, I, I, I began to, to speak to this pain and tell the pain to dissipate. I told the pain to go away. I told the ailment that it had no place in that body. Whew. Wasn't because I, I thought of something. I didn't think about my condition. I didn't think about who I was. I didn't think about the power and authority. I just moved under the unction of the Holy Spirit. Well, I want to tell you, results are inevitable when we flow by the Spirit. God's sending aid for some situations He's sending aid. He offers divine aid. Can I tell you, we have to move back. We have to get ourselves in position. We're going to have to do some things mentally, emotionally, spiritually to speak and call forth things. We got to do what the Spirit of God is saying. That's where I'm at. Glory to God. That's what's in me right now. I say right now. It's, it's that place. I, I know this is who I am in Christ. I cannot do anything but, folks, We've got to believe that God is able. Whew. we got to move in ways that we can't even understand. And so he said, I promise, I promise, the Spirit of God says, I'm bringing you divine aid. I'm going to bring you help. He says, I'm going to restore you. Man, what does restore, restoration really look like? I've been talking about this same thing over and over again. <coughs> restoration. What God really talks about in this place of restoration it kind of looks like this bone that's broken. He says, I'm going to mend it. I'm going to make it knit or come back together like it's never was broken. I'm getting ready to do something that you can't even imagine. God said, there are things that I'm getting ready to do in the body of Christ. Well, I'm going to tell you, he is reminding me of things he's spoken from years ago. I don't know about you, but I've been walking for a little while. And in the course of walking, there's some days that I've been tired. There's some days that I wanted to quit. I don't know about you. You probably never experienced this. There's some days I just said, you know what? What is the point in this? But the Spirit of God has reminded me 
of what he's called and what he's spoken. Folks, I'm telling you that even though the lion has roared, God wants you to know there's another side. He's also been speaking to me that even though we talk about that lion, I'll have to talk about the lion of Judah. That's for another day. But listen to this. There's some things you and I are going to have to agree upon that our God is able to do. And so he talks about this divine aid that he's bringing forth. God's talking about some things he wants us to move into. He's talking, can I tell you, the word shift. The Spirit of God wants us to shift into a new place in him. There's a new place of power. There's a new place of authority. There's a place where God is saying, but you're going to have to lose some things in the process. Now, the things you lose are you. The things you're going to lose sight of are the things that I'm talking about before. What he said, remember when I talk about discipline? Remember when I talk about deliverance? He's getting, remember when I talk about humbling? He, you're going to humble yourself. He's getting ready to cause you to, to let some things out of your life to bring some things in. That's the way he operates. It's always about it. You let go, I have something more. When you let go of this, I've got something. He says, listen, I want to clothe you. But the way God says clothe, he says, I want to put something on you, but I got to take something off. Whew. Every time he gives, there's always an exchange. You got to get this. There's an exchange God wants you to have. So he's offering you in the midst of what you're experiencing right now. God is saying to you and to I that this is a time that I'm going to offer divine aid. Tell somebody he's going to restore me. Whew. I don't have to stay like I am. I don't have to be in the condition I am. I don't have to hurt anymore. God's going to restore. He's going to bring those things back to their original condition. Amen. Whew. Amen. Man, I want to tell you, I want to tell you, God is blessing. God is blessing. He is moving. He is causing things to unfold. Listen, don't give up just yet. Don't let go just, just right now. Just hold on just a little while. Give it another moment. Give it another minute. You're right there at the point in which God is getting ready to move. Oh, glory to God. Man, there's so much more. But I want to tell you like this. I'm getting ready to close this one today because I, I, I don't know why. It's just it won't let me go. But I'm telling you, the Lord, tell somebody, God wants to restore your joy. God wants to restore whatever's missing in your life. God wants to bring you back to the place of which he intended for you to be. Don't worry about what it was yesterday. Don't worry about that. The place that God's getting ready to do, you're going to find yourself where you haven't lost ground. You haven't moved an inch. Nothing's how you say it. It's where he wants us to be. There's a new thing God's getting ready to do. Been saying these things. There's a new thing the spirit of God is going to do. It is in this hour. It is in this season. It is in this moment. It is in this time. I'm telling you, it's like the doors are open. It's time. Glory to God. It's time. It's like God says it's time, and I'm calling it in. I'm making it happen. Glory to God. You don't have to do this. God says, I'm going to do it for you. My God, my God, my God. I don't know about you, but I'm blessed. Even in this very place that I've been in, God is blessing He's establishing some new things. Listen, listen, I don't know what it is. I don't know what you're dealing with, but I do know God is able. I know that he said he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. I don't care what you're facing. God said there's nothing new. How you say it like that? There's nothing new under the sun. So whatever you and I have endured or how you say it, that we've come in unto or come into our lives, God has already seen it and he has the power to overcome it. Glory to God. There's things he's getting ready to do, folks. You can't even imagine he's going to do it. This is a season for great things to transpire. Amen. Will you trust him in the midst of it all? Come on, let's, let's just do this here. I want you to put your hands up. Glory to God. Just put your hands up. I don't care where you're at, what you're going through. I know that my God is able. Amen. Father, I'm thanking you right now. Father, I thank you that right now, that the listening audience, Father God, that you're going to speak into their hearts, speak into their minds, and speak into their situations. No matter where the people are at or no matter what's going on, Father, I thank you for your hand, of your divine hand or your mighty hand of, of deliverance and discipline. Father, I thank you that you will skillfully move for them right now. Father, that you're going to take away the things that will be hindering and holding them in place. Father, I thank you that, that thoughts that have been with people for I don't know how many years... I come against it now in Jesus' name, that we relinquish, that we submit, that we humble ourselves, that right now in Jesus' name you move. 
Glory to God. Father, I thank you for, for, for healing in bodies mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. And yet, Father, I thank you that even now that you're going to speak and they'll know your voice, discern and distinguish the voice of God from another. I thank you that it's clear, it's precise. I thank you for those desiring, even in this hour, to go higher. For you said that you will exalt in due time. And so, Father, I thank you that you're going to speak and minister and cause the hearts and minds to be affected, that men and women in this hour will be able to step into the places that you're calling according to the Spirit. I thank you, whew, thank you for greatness by the Spirit. Yes, thank you. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I thank you physical ailments going. I thank you for things in your body being reversed where the doctor said that it's over. I thank you that God is reversing the words that's been spoken. I come against word curses. I come against the enemy moving in different ways. I come against it now in Jesus name. What the enemy said you can't, I thank you that God says you can. I thank you where he said your body would fail. God said not so, but I'm calling forth restoration. So I thank you for restoration in Jesus' name. I thank you for ministries being restored, for men and women of God, for the anointing of God flowing like never before. I thank you that you called into a place of wisdom to move in this hour like never before, that the Spirit of God might skillfully show you how and what to do. So I thank you for changes that come forth now in Jesus' name. And so that now as we pray, I'm praying again for those that are looking, that don't know Jesus and the free pardon of their sin. I, I, I don't want to get into the controversies that the world offers, but I want to tell you that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and no man can come to the Father except by this one. Listen, listen. Jesus died for you and I, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God wants to meet you today. As you open your heart, he will receive you and you receive him. Ask him to come in and it's done in Jesus' name. So Father, I thank you for the spirit of increase upon your people. I thank you for them walking spiritually in a new way, physically in a new manner. Father, I thank you that mentally, emotionally, that we're moving, that we're blessed in every aspect and every facet and dimension of our lives. And I give you the glory for this now in Jesus' mighty name. And so folks, I'm telling you again, I thank God for him speaking. I thank God for his time. I thank God for what he's doing. I pray that you are blessed in the today by the word of God. Again, as I said, we've been talking about this, but I want to tell you that the word works. The word works if you will work the word. Glory to God. We now have three ways that you can give. You can go to our website at agapecommunityfellowship.com. Go to the bottom and click on the Givelify link. That's one way. Way number two is to give through Zelle. To give through Zelle, just go to your bank account, click on the Zelle uh, icon. The email address for that is agape int for us at yahoo.com the third way to pay is go to the p.o box 1222 pomona california 91767 thank you